So the ambulance entrance was back there. Over here is probably the main parking lot. Oh, and that may be the main non emergency entrance. Main non emergency entrance. This building is, or was, Southwest Detroit Hospital. It was built in 1974. Prior to this, segregation kept black doctors out of large hospitals. Out of necessity, many black-only hospitals were housed in former homes, like Trumbull General Hospital, pictured here. In 1973, Trumbull General merged with three other southwestern Detroit-area black hospitals. The new entity chose architectural firm Eberly M. Smith Associates to build their grand new hospital at a cost of $21 million. It boasted friendly, cost-conscious service to all people, regardless of race, color, or national origin. This building represents an important piece of post-civil rights era Detroit. Unfortunately, it fell to bankruptcy and scandals of unethical medical practices, unethical financial decisions. It's been abandoned since 2007. I think it's flooded. I can't really tell from here. No, it's not flooded. Well, there was water down here, though it's kind of damp. Here's your entry desk. Here's your big old cart knocked over, blocking the way. Early urban explorers found the abandoned hospital full of equipment and medical records. They also found the basement completely flooded. It was eventually pumped out, but you can see the damage caused by being submerged in stormwater for nearly a decade. Whoa, it's freaking slimy down here. The floor is slimy with like wet plaster and shit. Yeah, it's gross. I'm sure that's Bill I hear over there. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> Take my shoes off at the door before I walk in the house. Wow. You just keep. I hear Bill. He's this way. Keep making noise. We'll find you. We found him. He's got the respirator. <laughs> That's probably smart. I don't have one. I'm like my tube dust every weekend. So. Oh gosh, it's so so muddy. Last time I was in there, I heard like power on the vacuum with water. Yep. Okay. Me and Jesse tried to hunt down the source of that water and we could not find it.
Yeah, this goes The entire building was gutted in 2017, leaving just a big empty shell. It looks more like a warehouse than a hospital. These big onyx planters. It looks like something you'd see in the courtyard of a hospital without the little minion guys. Oh yeah, right over there I see him. Okay, this step here looks sketchy. Yeah. What do you mean he's here right now? All right, I'm going up. Someone must have torn that thing down. Huh? Someone must have torn that out just for the view. That's Leaf Plaza there? Yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's Fisher. Fisher. Fine. Where's not, Fisher? Not, that's the Fisher building. Oh, Fisher building, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at 
gorgeous view here, man. The location was used in filming the 2015 series adaptation of 12 Monkeys. It's a really cool building, an example of 1970s modernism. I love how the circle window motif is continued throughout. While preparing to put this video together, I came across this photo from before the hospital was gutted, and I immediately recognized the style of this mural. Looked it up just to be sure, and yep, this is the work of Leroy Foster. I recently saw an exhibition of his work at the Cranbook. The highlight of the show was this 1978 piece entitled Renaissance City. This canvas had been hanging in the old Cast Tech High School, which was demolished in 2011. Most assumed the mural was lost as well until a poetic urban exploration story was finally told. Cast Tech was abandoned in 2005. A year later, a group of art students and teachers ventured inside on a smash and grab mission to salvage art supplies, and they grabbed the foster canvas as well, rolled it up, and it sat stashed away in the new school for 17 years. Now it's been restored and is proudly on display. This mural, however, this 1976 work entitled Kaleidoscope was not painted on a canvas that could be rolled up and saved. This 9 foot by 28 foot mural was painted on the hospital's waiting room wall. And now, well, you see what's left now. This newspaper article and this photo from Detroit Urbex may be all that's left. The only way anyone will ever see this incredible work of art. This is where I see Urbex transcending itself. On the surface, urban exploration is a dangerous hobby where people on the fringes of society go into unsafe structures to take photos. But there's a deeper level to it, a bigger purpose. My photos and video capture not just a moment in time, but a slice of humanity that is gone now. These images are tangible proof of what was. History made visible. And that is important, I think. That has value. And that is why I do what I do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my exploring comrades in this video, Antonio, and the god of Urbex himself, Mr. Bill Finnan. I'll put links to their social media in the description below. Please follow them, and please help this channel continue to grow by subscribing and sharing this video with anyone who would appreciate it. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time.